GPT-5 was unveiled by OpenAI a couple of hours ago and OpenAI claims GPT-5 to be the smartest, fastest and the best model that they have for coding. Another interesting thing here is that GPT-5 is a unified model and for the first time in history, GPT-5 or let's say the frontier model that OpenAI released is now being truly made available to all users including free users. Another thing is that if you have a ChatGPT account, you can go ahead and access GPT-5 without paying. So that's an interesting thing. And OpenAI itself claims that GPT-5 is their best model for coding yet. And today in this video, I'm going to use GPT-5 on let's say Cursor and Lowbird to see how it performs and how's the performance like. So let's quickly get started. So this right here is the official release blog post on OpenAI's website and it says introducing GPT-5, our smartest, fastest, most useful model yet with built-in thinking that puts extra level intelligence in everyone's hand. And now if I scroll down, it says GPT-5 is a unified system with a smart, efficient model that answers most questions, a deep reasoning model that is GPT-5 thinking for harder problems and a real-time router. Now that the thing is that you don't really have to rely on all these models like O3 Pro, O3 or GPT-40 anymore. So all of that is now confined to this flagship model that is GPT-5. And now let's say you don't really have to select an extra mode for let's say enabling let's say deep reasoning. You can simply mention think harder in the prompt and hit enter and now the automatic real-time router within the system will automatically use deep reasoning mode and then come up with an answer. And now that is to say GPT-5 is a flagship model that comes with reasoning and thinking capabilities and it can automatically and intelligently switch the modes depending on the prompt that you give. And now if you want to learn more about GPT-5 and what it can do, you can head over to this page right here and here we have all these benchmarks, results and all that. But what we are interested in is the actual real-world performance and if I scroll a bit towards the top it open a also mentions that gpt5 is their strongest coding model to date okay so we are specifically interested in that and we are going to checking it out and now if i open lovable as you can see here we have gpt5 live already and it says available until 12 am pt on sunday august 10th so that means it is only available for two days in lovable before it opens up let's say for everyone Right now you can use it for free for the next two days, I mean included in your plan of course, but it will be only globally available to all users level later after a week or something. But the good news is that Cursor users can now use GPT-5 in Cursor and the interesting thing is that it's completely free. And yes, you heard it correct. You can now use the latest GPT-5 in Cursor completely for free. And don't get me wrong, that is not to say that you can just open Cursor and use a free account and use GPT-5. You should have, let's say, a premium account, let's say the pro plan, but GPT-5 usage won't count towards, let's say, your monthly quota. So that is the idea. And now if I open Lauber, I can give a prompt and if I click on this button right here, I can toggle the same. And now if I, let's say, open Cursor, there you go. If I click on this model selector, I can now find all these options like GPT-5, GPT-High, Fast and if I go to the add models option, here I can find all the variants like high, fast, then we have low, high, fast, then low, fast. So all of that is in here. So that means GPT-5 is indeed live on all these platforms. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and give some random questions, let's say asking the AI to create, let's say a landing page or copy a design from a screenshot and let's see how it performs. I know I've been seeing a lot of people praising GPT-5 for how good it creates UI. So it, it is said that GPT-5 is really good when it comes to designing UI. So we will test all of that in today's video. And first of all, I guess I'll start with Lovable. And now I have already ran a prompt and this right here is the prompt that I gave. And I just mentioned, I want to create a really cool looking and modern landing page for my rocket startup company that looks so sleek and modern even in 2030. And I also explicitly mentioned it to create in HTML. And here GPT-5 within Cursor has already created the same. And here I can find the HTML file in here. And now I can click on keep all or let's say accept. And now let me just go ahead and try to preview the same. Okay. So this right here is the landing page that GPT-5 within Cursor has created for us and we have that sleek looking animations, we have this okay, floating particles in the background that reacts to mouse movement and then we have this uh, rocket shape in here, glass morphism effect. Okay, I get it. GPT-5 seems like it's it has improved and it is quite good in let's say UI design is what I guess. So this is actually a sleek one and now I ran the exact same prompt in Lovable as well and here I have the same. And now I actually used GPT-5 to let's say uh, design the same. And as you can see, this right here is the landing page that Lovable has created. <laughs> okay. And as you can see, I gave the exact same prompt and I have GPT-5 enabled. And we now have got like widely different kind of results, right? 
okay in which ways i like the result that cursor was able to generate next step what i'll do is i'll go ahead and let's say give a design mockup or ui mockup of uh, let's say a email client and i will ask both the ais to create and let's say replicate the same but before that let me quickly take a second to talk about our sponsors for today's video by trover imagine a dedicated memory layer one that sits between you and your ai agent quietly remembering pretty much everything well, this is where ByteRover comes into play. ByteRover automatically generates memories from your code base, capturing programming concept, bug fixes, and business logic. This functions as a second brain for your AI agent, ensuring your agents automatically retrieve the right context-relevant information, whether it's a past discussion, a decision rule, or a tricky bug to fix. Now, ByteRover is a game changer if you work as a team. In fast-moving organization, lost knowledge means lower teams. So ByteRover creates a shared memory layer so your agents and engineers reuse what's already been solved and not start over. And now to get started, head over to ByteRover's official website and sign up for an account. After logging in, create a workspace and proceed to add ByteRover to your coding agent. And now ByteRover is available on all leading platforms like Cursor, Cloud Code, VS Code, WinServ, Gemini CLI, Cursor CLI, etc. And just follow the on-screen instructions and it will take less than a minute to set it up. And now once installed, when you use your AI coding tool, for example, let's say Cursor in my case, all my interaction preferences, bug fixes, and pretty much everything will be stored in ByteRover's memory. And every time I give a prompt to cursor to do something, it will automatically look at my memory and pull relevant information and get going. And the interesting part is that ByteRover will automatically capture and store all important information about my preference and code in ByteRover memory as well. Now, even if you move to a different ID or let's say a different person from your team works on the same project, they will have access to the same shared memory space. So click the first link in the description below, head over to ByteRover.dev and sign up for a new account and add the same to your AI coding agent today. And now back to the video. So I'll go ahead and let's say open a new chat in Lovable and I have already created let's say a project in here. So this is basically a Next.js based project and I have the dev server running in here. So let me open it up. So there you go. And now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and upload a screenshot and ask the AI to sort of build it and let's see how it goes. And now this writer is the prompt I'll give and it says build a modern and slick email client with next level UI based on the screenshot attached. And this right here is the screenshot that I'm planning to attach or let's say give to the AI. So basically I want to design something similar to this. I don't want to make it functional, but just the UI part. So I can drag and drop the same. And maybe I can also explicitly say that I only want you to implement the UI. No need to make it functional now. Okay. And now I'll copy the prompt and I have enabled GPT-5 in here and I'll click on the send button. And now I'll do the same in let's say cursor as well. Here I have cursor opened. I'll paste the same prompt and then I'll drag and drop the exact same image for reference. I'll select GPT-5 high and now I'll click on the send button and let's see what happens. So in here it says thinking. Obviously GPT-5 is a thinking model. It can do thinking and reasoning well. So here in Lovable it says thinking and it says I'll scan the project files to understand the current setup. React slash next CSS tooling and then implement the UI edits accordingly. And now it's reading all the files that we have in our project right now. And okay, let's wait for it. And since we selected the GPT-5 high variant or model, it will put extra efforts into let's say reasoning or thinking. And I guess it will take some time. Okay, it thought for about like a minute and a half is what I guess. And now it says implementing the new UI and it will start by replacing app slash page.tsx file with a multi-column email layout and adding minimal styles. In which ways, let's wait for it and I'll see you after it's done. So after about three to five minutes, here we have the output ready. And this is what Lovable has created. And I'll, for reference, I'll also show you the screenshot that we attached. So this right here is the screenshot that we attached and this is what we got. And to be honest, it's not bad, right? I mean, yeah, it's good. We don't have this panel up in here. We actually do, but all of these user avatars are not available. And let's also see the result that let's say Cursor has created. So it says it is running in localhost 3000. Oh, there you go. Here we have it. So this right here is the output that Cursor has created in just a single shot. And for reference again, this right here was the screenshot that we gave. Okay, it is reasonably good is what I would say, but it's not 100% accurate or anything, but that's okay, it is good. Next step, I'll go ahead and try to create a game using GPT-5 and try some more complex prompts. So if I open the OpenAI website about the GPT-5, let's say, uh, release notes, here they have a couple of these samples and they claim all of these were actually built using GPT-5. And what I'll do is I'll simply go ahead and let's say copy this prompt that they used. Okay, I'll copy the same. And now I'll open cursor and 
uh, here we have the project with just a single html file and maybe i can rename it to let's say html1 and i'll close the same and open a new chat and close this one and i'll give the exact same prompt in here and now i'll hit send and let's see what it is able to do basically i want to create this jumping ball runner game and if i click on the start running option as i click space the ball jumps yeah that's how the game is and let's see if cursor is able to build it in one shot similarly i'll maybe open let's say a new project in lovable and give the exact same prompt and maybe i'll just uh delete this part that is the html part and now i'll click on okay i have enabled gpt5 and i'll click send and let's see how it goes so as you can see both lovable and cursor has started working on the same and yeah the thinking process is going to take some time and after that writing code will also take some time so i'm expecting at least three to five minutes for the entire process in which ways okay it says i'm going to create a new html file index.html with the content and it is now creating the file and here lovable is still thinking so i will wait till it is done and i'll see you afterwards all right so it seems like it is done and let's first analyze the result of let's say lovable okay we have that sound effect and we have all these obstacles okay this is good i mean it works and we have the sound effects this uh, toast in here but for some reason the game is not filling this entire area so the parallax effect and all that is working but if you look at it this was the result that open ai claims that gpt5 was able to generate in just a single prompt right here okay and i can probably tell this is far way better because we have that shadow and everything else in the version that gpt5 in chat gpt might have created i don't know and maybe let's just open uh what cursor has created i'll keep all the changes and it has wrote like what oh 746 lines of code and now i'll open the same wow okay now we are talking i don't know why but for some reason gpt5 in cursor feels way way better than gpt5 in lovable and as you probably might have already seen in terms of ui and the functionality this is how it looks like and it says jumping bolt runner and now it is pretty similar to that of let's say the result that was showcased in let's say open AS website in which case let me try to click on space okay it works we have that shadow we have that okay effect in here it works it is truly functional it seems maybe i can try to get past the first obstacle jump yup okay look at that so this right here is the game that we were able to develop in just a single prompt and now if i want to i can iterate over it and build even better version and all these parallax effect towards the background works really well right all right so i like it so good one for that and next step i'll ask gpt5 to create uh let's say a crm or maybe let's say a kanban board styled app where it has a sleek and modern let's say design so i'll say create a kanban board app where users can add and drag and drop items between boards make sure to give the app a sleek and modern look that looks so futuristic okay so this is the prompt i'll give and now i'll copy the same oh, okay a couple of spelling mistakes in here yeah i'll copy the same i'll click on send and maybe i'll open i can create a new thread in cursor and i'll give the same and i'll click on send and let's see what happens and here we have the app okay this was actually and here we have the email client right and for the time being maybe i can also go ahead and ask cursor to make it kind of functional but without a backend so i should be able to do some basic actions like let's say open a email click on this uh, reply option send a uh, reply email i want the same to appear in here so what i'll do is i'll open the same and i'll first of all click on this keep all button and next step i'll say i want to make it functional for now but without any backend or api i just want to see how it looks like when i send a reply or open a different email or click on options on the left sidebar to open different pages and also implement a functional settings and profile page as well and now i'll click on this send button right here just i mean why not right and maybe if i let's say open my cursor account and if i head over to let's say the dashboard and if i go to usage section right here and as i can see it says gpt5 high in here and here we can find all this token count and it says 0.32 dollars but the good news is that it won't be counted towards our quota so as you can see it says during the promotional release period initial gpt5 usage does not count towards usage limits okay so that is a good thing 
so here we have all these usages in here yeah that's a good thing so gpt5 is completely free if you are a cursor pro user in which ways we will wait for let's say cursor to add all the features that we asked for into this email app and then let's say create this kanban board app in lovable and also here in cursor as well and now i'll see you afterwards it's done all right so seems like both lovable and cursor it's done creating the kanban board app so first of all we will look at the implementation of lovable and here we have this nice hovering effect and i can drag and drop items between these cards but it is not moving along with my cursor but that's okay we have that subtle animation when we rearrange the same and i like the same so if i move the item within the same board we have that i mean the item comes along with my uh, cursor but if i move to a different one it goes maybe i can add some more content yeah it works maybe i can add a new column yeah it works right i mean it is not that futuristic or anything but gets the job done and now it's time to use cursor so let me see here we have kanban.html file okay so this is like 501 513 lines of code wow okay i now understand why people are saying gpt5 gets to make some really great ui because look at this one so we have that strong gradient in the background and this glass morphism effect and to be honest it is actually good and with a bit more of a tweaking it can look really really good is what i would say i can now move things around it works if i click on this pencil button i can edit the content yeah that's good i can delete the content i can export the content oh as a json that's cool i can reset it i can add a column it seems okay wow i must tell the ui is really good and from my brief usage like comparison between lovable and cursor one thing that i have noticed is that gpt5 in cursor gives the best ui output as far as i have used i don't know why it is not the same in here because i have literally enabled gpt5 in here i'm not sure but yeah so as far as ui side is concerned gpt5 on cursor really rocks and let me open the other one for now okay here i have cursor so kanban boot style yeah it's a thumbs up from my side and all right so it is still implementing all the features that we asked for in this let's say email client right here so i just want to make it functional right so i should be able to access the settings page reply to an email and maybe even open the profiles page let's wait for it as well so there you go so gpt5 in cursor has made the email client a functional and it has actually made edits to quite a lot of files and created a lot of files as well and now i'll maybe refresh it once and let's see what happens when i send a reply like this and i click on send okay the reply appears in here all right so that's good maybe i can send something in here okay it even updates the result in here so all of that works and i can view different emails and the content is fairly the same but the name changes in here and if i move between these tabs okay those are just static placeholders is what i believe okay what about the settings page okay that's not really making a difference that's not what i wanted by the way and we have the profile change option or the edit profile button okay so the thing is that i actually wanted to make all these changes within this interface right here but it actually kinds of let's say opens up a new page with a different layout so that's not what i wanted but in which ways this is the new gpt5 so gpt5 i mean i used it for like a couple of hours now and for the front end task especially in cursor it works best i mean i think this is the best model from open ai that can create really amazing uis right that doesn't scream ai so every time you create a ui like using all these previous models from open ai they will have that kind of a purple color and that just screams ai and now it's miles better and all these sample apps and results that they shared on their open ai page is actually really good including this game this one right here this is this typing game the drum simulator and even lo-fi visualizer so everything is actually really good oops maybe i can post that and yeah that's pretty much all i wanted to show you in this video so here we have all these benchmark numbers and everything else which i don't really care about i know the best part is that cursor is now giving free access to gpt5 if you are a pro user so whatever stuff you built using gpt5 won't count towards your usage limits so you can go check them out and let's say build something out and let's see how it goes and also if you have tried gpt5 let me know how it went for you in the comment section below and yeah that's pretty much it and i hope you guys found this video useful if yes make sure to subscribe and i'll see you next one